And we are back for another episode of AlphaCast. Today, it is our pleasure to have the one and only John McAfee on the show. And uh, he doesn't really need any introduction, of course, if you've, unless you've been completely asleep the last 15, 20 years. So we're going to jump right in the show today and get this fired up because I know we, uh, time is, uh, is of, the, <clears throat> of the essence today. How are you today, Bear? Oh, I'm, great. I'm doing great. Thank you. So are we, uh, are we being recorded now, Mike? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Hey, John, welcome. And thanks so much for being with us. Um, you know, really, uh, really want to chat with you about so many things. You know, I've had a lot of uh, parallel adventures in my life uh, because I took some different uh, paths, you know, in my journey through medicine over the years and had uh, adventures with uh, the powers that be and so forth. And and in order to get the privacy that I needed in order to practice medicine the way I felt I could serve people best, I ended up in exotic locations in Fiji and uh, remote islands and things and had people fly in to see me. But anyway, you know, what's uh, uh, really on people's minds today, of course, is all this Cerveza virus kind of thing. And uh, maybe I could make a couple comments uh, just to start things off and, and let you respond. Right. And hopefully we'll have some. Uh, you know, time for other things because I'm kind of tired of talking about it, but here we go. You know, I've been a, a physician for 40 years, and uh, this is what I've put together about this whole thing we're seeing. And, uh, you know, first off, and I'll just go through these real quick, you know, the, the statistics we're seeing are purposely uh, skewed. Uh, you yes, know, the tests yes, indeed. Doing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the the positives that they get on the test, a lot of false positive. The test itself is flawed. Uh, the associated DNA that they're theoretically linking with this virus would be positive in populations in past years the same. Uh, the symptoms that many people are experiencing are due to other causes. And then uh, all the deaths and people with symptoms are all lumped in the coronavirus. And, yeah, if you have, uh, you know, yes. This, yeah, so this is... Uh, the CDC, nine days ago, um, put out new guidelines, uh, only for the coronavirus, um, that uh, due to the urgency of the issue, um, uh, any death uh, where if you were tested for the virus and you have it uh, will be blamed on the virus. Now, as a physician, my friend, <laughs> you know for a fact that uh, people in hospitals terminally ill from heart disease, uh, you name it, uh, pneumonia, um, uh, that die from these causes, cancer, what, even by the way, if you get hit by a bus and you go to the hospital and you're there for a week and die and you're tested positive for the virus, uh, you were killed by the virus. Now, seriously, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it, it's a hot, button for me and i just don't know how to wake people up everybody's going oh you know no one wants to know that they've been fooled i think that's the problem anyway i continue my friend i'm so sorry no i, I was uh, i was about done the last thing i was going to say is you know we done podcast ourselves uh, on our show and and on other people's platforms where we talk about the whole theory of virus uh, you know that i was taught in school uh, you know as medically flawed and that there's another whole uh, plausible understanding of what virus really is, uh, but that's you know way beyond our time constraints today. Um, and you know the the last thing I'll mention is that uh, at least 20 years ago, uh, you know I was traveling within my circles that actually included people in intelligence and other you know key positions where we were all predicting that there would be a biological event right about now that would be used to consolidate power, bring in a cash to society. Yes and force ma uh, vaccinate the population. And here we are, and I can't help but think it's, uh, a co uh, it's not a coincidence. No, of course it's not, of course it's not. Listen, plus uh, everything is being hyped by the uh, mainstream media way out of proportion. Okay, yes, yeah, so we have what today, maybe what, 130,000 dead, 140 max, okay? Um, over the entire world. Uh, with a population of 7.8 billion. Um, that translates, and by the way, the flu, uh, as you are well aware as, as a physician worldwide, killed uh, 630,000 people 
last year. Uh, but as a physician, you know, we don't, we just don't, oh, uh, the killed X number. Uh, you can only make it relative in terms of population. Like, okay, that's uh, flu killed 12 out of 100,000 population last year. The coronavirus has killed what out of 100,000? Two so far. And the meat is going staggering numbers, um, horror. It's mm -hmm. like, what? Can you not count anymore? I mean, pathogenic diarrhea worldwide killed 2.5 million last year. Uh, even that at uh, 48 per 100,000, um, we don't lock down the world for. It's, in, it's insane. So the mainstream media is hyping this so far out of proportion. Plus, it's, it's uh, seasonal like the flu. If you don't believe me, let's look at the Southern Hemisphere right now. Uh, Australia, uh, with a population of 24 million, had uh, 70 deaths so far. I'm sorry to laugh, please. I understand families have lost loved ones, um, but 60 million people last year in the world died, and, and that's 60 million families that lost loved ones. My heart goes out to them all. But can we have some... some uh, uh, relative sense here people it, it makes no sense um so and africa okay in africa and people go yeah well australia has uh, really great medical care which is actually not true what about africa then uh, 1.2 billion people uh, and 8,000 deaths um that and is one million population now so it's it is it's way less than the northern hemisphere uh but it will get worse there as, as it gets colder in the southern. Uh, it is a seasonal virus. Um, by May 15th or so, as you're well aware, uh, if it's like the flu and it seems to have the same uh, cyclical uh, presence, um, it'll be virtually gone. And it's going to come back again in full force in October, of course. Um, and Sweden, by the way, has not locked down. Now, they've had a thousand deaths in a population of 10 million people. <laughs> it run the numbers, people. Um, we are overblowing reason. Uh, that's all I'll say. You know, uh, John, what, what I was saying is the best defense against COVID is turning off your television. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you, my, my young friend with the baseball cap, how old are you? I am, believe it or not, 41. <laughs> Sorry? I'm 41 years old. Okay, you're 41 years old. Then you from this thing, we're about a one in a million. Do you understand? The, only, the people who are dying are the, uh, uh, the old folks like me. But even then, <laughs> it's... It is not such a big deal. And I've talked to 30 year olds who go, I'm terrified for, you know, what am I gonna, what do you mean? I mean if you get sick with it, uh, you will survive some, I mean, please. Uh, and it will do no permanent harm. It's insane, utterly. Well, it, it's, it's my language. It's, it's how they define things. It's how they use language and define things. So they're oh. essentially defining the common cold or this flu as, as this new pandemic or what we yeah. call a plan, a plandemic. And, yes. uh, and as, as Dr. Lando said, this is the, they've been talking about this for decades. This, this was, you know, Kissinger has talked about this uh, at the World Health yes. Organization many times. So how yes. do we wake people up? How do we wake them well, up? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Even telling, look, what happened with this $2 billion uh, um, plan? Well, in that plan, uh, the FBI now in emergency situations has the legal right to arrest you without cause, without a judge, without a subpoena, without uh, any sort of documentation and hold you uh, indefinitely. Now, why? Well, they need these powers in horrendous situations like this, where we have staggering deaths and uh, an economic collapse. Well, listen, the virus, for example, did not fire 17 million people in America. That's how many have lost jobs so far. No, it's our government stupidity that, that caused the loss of these jobs. 
you know, the virus doesn't come in and say, okay, I'm going to destroy the airline industry and I'm going to destroy the oil industry. I'm going to destroy. No, <laughs> we did it as people. Uh, and even showing that to them, that they, we've now given away uh, all of our freedoms uh, to the forces that be, providing they can say, well, this is an emergency. Please God. <laughs> I don't know how to wake people up. I really don't. I'm getting tired. You know, I've lost 25,000 followers in the past. Shut up uh, about uh, on Twitter. I very well, refuse to shut up about. I will say you have some of the some of the best uh, tweets around right now. Your Bill Gates tweet about Microsoft and the state of his penis. <laughs> Maybe I'm was... sorry. I'm sorry about that one. It, it was it was unkind, but I'm pissed off at Bill Gates. I did meet him one time. <laughs> I don't understand him, quite frankly. It was the most boring time I've ever had. Uh, and I, I, I would drive and you know, with him again. But there's something wrong with that man. I, I just don't know what it is. He's uh, power may hungry. Maybe he is packed with Lucifer? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> yeah. I, I think there's only one uh, CEO that's allowed to do that. And I think... Um, Mark Zuckerberg has already taken that prize. So, um. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, where do you see us going? So, are you hopeful? Or are you pessimistic? I mean, it's obviously right now the the state of the world seems to be at a place of uh, uh, of two really um, dire polarization, where you have those that are waking up fast, and those that just seem to be getting more and more zombie like. And we saw it with the 2016 election in the United States. We're seeing it right now where we see people say, Gates is just trying to help the world. The vaccine will save us. <laughs> to, people, to people saying, to people literally saying, you know, in Michigan, I think, was it yesterday, they were like, you know, at the, the, the steps of the Capitol saying enough's enough in, in the United States here. Yes. Um, yeah, I saw that. Thank God. So, so where are we going with this right now? Where do you think the world's going? You know, I, I'm not hopeful from what I see. I see people uh, like sheep um, without using their own heads, letting others think for them, letting the press, uh, the mainstream media think for them, letting the government think for them, buying wholeheartedly the propaganda uh, that the press and the government jointly uh, uh, spew out uh, daily. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm shocked that people don't have the backbone. Uh, Jesus God. Had this happened in 1960 under Dwight Eisenhower, there would have been uh, a national uprising of unbelievable proportions. We, did, we wouldn't have taken it. But today, people just sheepishly go, oh, okay, all right, without, without regard to the, the impact to the economy, to the people who are starving in the world. And trust me, the 12 million that are starving currently, that's going to be increased by an order of magnitude when our economy uh, is debilitated to the point that we can no longer feed ourselves in America. Yeah, John, we're going to be, I'm sorry. You know how many people died of hunger from January 1st to March 25th? I'm looking at the world and world meter. Well, it's 12 million a year divided by three, I think. So 2.4 million. Yeah. Two, yeah. Two point. Okay. They're saying 2.4. So, it's that's close. So, <laughs> So, so anyways, my one thing, one theory that I have that uh, many of our friends have is that this is all a cover for the food shortages that are coming that, and the supply oh, chain Jesus issues. And, and so, you know, I mean, there's, a, there's so many things that are coming, right? So, but, but we're all about solutions here and we're big fans of decentralization. We're big fans of permaculture, real medicine, real health. And there is an upswelling of, of people that are coming together in communities like ours, all in digital communities all around the world really trying to change this narrative and get get locally activated and start growing our own food and creating our own. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Dece you said the magic word decentralization. That is, that is our only hope. But then how do we get people to understand the implications of decentralization? Uh, how do we get people to understand? Oh my God. Uh, how, how can you live without a centralized control telling you what to do? Well, listen, <laughs> cryptocurrency has proven that it works just fine, right? Uh, nobody owns Monero. Nobody. Oh, I mean the, 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 you know, you can buy, you can get a piece and 
and uh, you may do business without anybody's permission uh, and you don't need trust. Um, good Lord, it is a powerful concept, but I fear from my experiences with, with cryptocurrency that the masses are not going to comprehend this. And, and listen, if the masses do not all follow, then any uh, attempt at change in this world is futile. You have to reach that critical mass where people go, oh, I see it, good. And then we all, we all just walk away from the madness and the madness dies uh, from lack of attention. Um, exactly. I, I, it's the, Buck, sure. <clears throat> the Buckminster Fuller model, right? Create the new reality you yes. want to see. And yes. we only need, I would say, you only need about 10% of us to lead the way, if that, and then the mass, the herd will follow. Because that's exactly, uh, you know, uh, I you mean. Know, in, in, <laughs> in, in Buckminster Fuller's day, that was, that was the case. But governments now have tools they didn't have back then. And for example, there's nothing private in their lives. You must believe me, if you're living in America, uh, the government is uh, listening, watching uh, through your smartphones, uh, through Alexa, through your television sets. Um, that didn't happen back then. Governments have enormous power now that they never had before. Um, have we gone past the point of no return? I sure hope so for the sake of, of my children and grandchildren and yours as well. Um, nevertheless, I will fight tooth and nail to my dying day against this madness. And that's all any of us can do. Uh, and, and then hope for the best people. W would you say though that government, yeah, I, I think... go ahead, Bear. Well, I was just gonna say, um, you know, that is a line in the sand when they do forced vaccines and, Oh, uh, you yes. know, want the little tattoo in the papers. I mean, that's where yes. I believe they really are trying to force a civil war. You know, the, what's disheartening yes. to me is, you know, John, you and I are, are contemporaries. And, yes. uh, you know, I was there going to college in the 60s and everything. And, uh, you know, we were going to change the world. And, and you, you know, people in our generation, we also can contrast how things have radically changed compared to the way they used to be. But now I talk to a lot of people uh, you know, my age and, and they're totally asleep and buying all this. And I'm wondering, wait, weren't we together, you know, back in yes, those I days know. and See, what that, happened that, to you? It's disheartening. Is it not disheartening to you? It is to me. Uh, mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I'm not giving up and I don't think you are. I can tell by the determined look in your eyes that you're not going to stop fighting. So as long as a few of us do not, as long as we all don't stop, there's hope. There's hope. Um, I am I am just uh, not smart enough to see the simple solution to this. I'm not. Uh, I don't see the way anymore. I did. I mean, just like you. By the way, I don't know if you ever read uh, Hunter Thompson's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, he had he had a most uh, normally that's an that's an incredibly funny book, but he had an extremely poignant passage near the end where he's. He's saying that, you know, he, he, they're staying, I think, at the Sands Hotel and they're looking west. And, and he says, you know, with the right kind of eyes, you can see where that crest of hope from the 60s broke and then receded uh, into nothingness. And that to me, because I lived through the 60s, 60s and the, the um, that's exactly what happened. At the end of the 60s, all hope was gone. I mean, we had people, uh, you know, National Guard shooting students at Ohio State University. We had um, this horrendous um, war in Vietnam. We had dissension. We had, um, I don't know what, maybe, maybe people grew up too fast. I mean, outside of Santa Cruz, California, there are no hippies left. Um, well, and Santa Cruz has turned into just a tourist mecca now. I was just there last it, summer. Oh, it's just traffic, hour-long traffic on the highway. No way. Oh, yeah. No oh, yeah. way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, you know, the, we all know the CIA came in, though, and co-opted that movement. They brought it, Timothy Leary. Yes, and the it did. Movement. Yeah. It did, yes. The CIA destroyed it completely completely yep. like it destroys any beautiful thing that doesn't fit in the cia's garden 
you know, so one thing that's kind of hopeful is that this whole foundation of this corporate government structure is built on Keynesian economics, which is a Ponzi scheme that can't keep going forever. And we know it's on shaky ground. And that's another reason for, I, I believe, this whole COVID madness is to cover up where, where, you know, it's so leveraged now that where are they going to go? They've only, they can only strip the third world so long before the Ponzi collapses. So yeah, but, what's but the listen, plan here? You, ha plan you haven't, can, can I mention one more thing that, that sure. you, you haven't brought up yet? The thing that scares me far worse than Bill Gates is Google. Um, Google's new system um, that will allow governments to track every citizen's uh, proximity <laughs> to another. Do you understand the implications of this? And I just read today that Australia is planning on implementing it. Now, whoa, talk about 1984 times 100. That's what it is, mm -hmm. that every one of your movements will be tracked by this system. Uh, everywhere you go, uh, there will be a history of who you had contact with. And even after the, the, um, uh, the panic is over, you know the facts of life. You implement a system, it doesn't go away. Uh, you create a law, it doesn't disappear. Uh, an emergency measure remains forever. This terrifies me, people. This is the big thing that few people are talking about. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt you. My apologies. Uh, well, that's actually a good segue into a project that I'm part of called Cordal. And we're trying to build a future decentralized internet. Uh, some serious blockchain developers have been working on this for six years on the underground. These are the original yes. cy cypherpunks. I don't, um, I'll send you the info on it. Um, we're, we've been in testnet. And this is, this is why decentralized blockchain, you know, these, there are these rebels out there working on these solutions. And, um, you know, this is where we need to go. We need to get P2P. We need to uh, cr take the internet by in our own hands. And that's, what this project's about is everybody gets a little, it runs their own node, mint, we call it minting, where you just prove your, uh, you know, you're helping out the network by running a node, and you can actually get a Cortector device, which is a little router that has Tor browser and all this cool uh, security functionality on it. And it's these types of projects, if we can, you know, get some of the, the masses to wake up and start adopting this stuff, we can, you know, get away from the Googles and the, the Facebooks. It's out there. It's, it's that tech, this technology yep. exists. So um, how, yeah, well, how, also, how are you doing with your decentralized exchange? Uh, it's, it's in beta. We're doing excellent. Uh, we added, uh, we added Bitcoin. If we now, we now support uh, Bitcoin is a hard motherfucker to add. It's an old <laughs> blockchain. Yep. It does not lend itself to anything. But we manage using atomic swaps to implement that. Uh, we've got Tron, we've got Ethereum, we've got Binance. Uh, by June, we will have, with the exception of Monero, I just don't know, none of us know how to put Monero on a decentralized distributed exchange. So we came up with our own privacy coin, Ghost. Um, uh, we just announced it a few days ago. The white paper's coming out May 15th, and we're going live with it uh, on June 15th. Now, it's, it's based on proof of, of, um, um, of proof of stake, not proof of work. And mm -hmm. the reason I did that, a lot of people don't like proof of stake, but proof of work already is, is chewing up more electricity yep. than the entire country of Denmark people. And we're just barely beginning this technology in terms of implementation to the masses. Um, can you imagine? Uh, we will we will suck up all the electricity in the world in a a world war world where electricity is already a scarce commodity in many places. So um, anyway, it's a proof of stake coin. Uh, it's private, extremely private. Uh, it's as good as as Monero, I believe. Um, and it will run on our exchange. It will be the first privacy coin that will run on a distributed exchange. And this is what I've been talking about forever. I, I think yep. my work there is almost complete now. Amazing. Um, with, with privacy coins and distributed exchanges, number one, 
since it's a distributed uh, decentralized exchange, it can't ever be shut down. Uh, and the logic for it is all smart contracts on the blockchain that can't be shut down. Um, and the privacy coin, meaning no one knows what you're doing. And since it is a distributed exchange with no KYC or anti-money laundering, we don't ask who you are. We don't want your name. We don't care what your email address is. No documentation. Um, you truly are free. Now, even on a uh, uh, even with a privacy coin like Monero on a centralized exchange, it makes no difference. Think about it, because exactly. governments can go in with a subpoena and say, "Hey, uh, we want this this guy's name." And the centralized exchange has it because you all have to submit some documentation in your bank account. With us, nothing. You just anonymously come in, start trading, anonymously go away, and come. Yeah, you you mentioned the SEC. a. Re- Pardon? I was just going to say, uh, you mentioned the, the centralized exchanges being the weak point to yes. crypto right now. And that's something we always stress. And actually, Cordal has a decentralized exchange. They've been working on this for six years. One of the original right. developers invented the, the first across uh, atomic chain swap and uh, right. Siam. So we're on the same level with this. We got to get off the centralized exchanges. Bitcoin's become yep. a, a, essentially a, a completely leveraged uh, currency. It's uh, it's not w- the original intention. It's not P2P. No, not at all. Yeah. No, but but see, you, you can't do anything with it just because of the limitations of Bitcoin. Now try to leverage um, our ghost, our coin. You just can't do it. Um, in any case, we're you know we're doing what we can, um, and we'll continue um, as long as I can, uh, because. In all seriousness, if we do not free ourselves financially and economically uh, from fiat currencies, we'll never be free. Because if we're dependent on the U.S. dollar, for example, then whatever the Fed wants to do, they can, like they just did, uh, let's print another $2 trillion. You know what that's going to do to your dollar within six months? It's going to devalue it by at least 25%. Um, can you live that way? No, not when someone else controls your finances. You must control your own. Privacy coins, distributed exchanges allow that. And unfortunately, we have time for one more question. I've gone a little over. Bear, I'll, I'll give it, I'll shout it over to you. <coughs> What's your- no, I'm just enjoying listening to you guys. Uh, you know, this is in my field, uh, but it makes me very hopeful knowing that you folks are you know, isolating this is a problem because years ago we were just trying to educate people on the, what the federal reserve really is. And, and this, and people could hardly wrap their minds around that. But um, last question I'd ask you, John, is, you know, there's a lot of uh, things in motion already because of this lockdown and we haven't even begun to uh, face the repercussions of it yet. And you're very aware, I know of the socioeconomic consequences. So how do you see this playing out and for how long, even it if can't they stopped out. it tomorrow. It cannot, uh, yeah. It, well, yeah, if even if they stopped it tomorrow, we've already damaged the world. Listen, this is an unprecedented event. The shutting down of half the world, half the world, the northern, well, actually, even the southern hemisphere, even though they don't have problems down there, Australia is, is, is considering shutting down and implementing this tracking uh, device as long as you have a cell phone. By the way, Janice and I do not own cell phones and we'll never have one. Uh, can't afford them because if we have them, we'll be found instantly. See, we're, you may not know we're on the run from the IRS and can't be found else I'll be shut up. Um, so we don't have phones, but you know, the entire world is shutting down. So think about this. Let's make an industry, granted airlines. Um, the airlines have to pay leases billions of dollars on the planes that they've leased and many in fact probably most of the planes are leased from somebody uh, whether or not they fly those planes now how are they going to pay that they've been shut down for a month even after 9 11 when we shut down the airspace for three days a couple of smaller airlines went out of business they live on believe it or not as big as they are they have very thin margins and um, massive expenses. So that's one. Uh, oil, not that many people care. Listen, do you see cars roaming around in New York? And certainly not where I am. 
Um, so gas stations, which again, um, you know, have a small margin, except on their candies and what have you, uh, how are they going to survive? Uh, how are the local restaurants going to survive that live hand to mouth? Um, so no, we're going to have an economic catastrophe of <laughs> unbelievable and, uh, and unprecedented proportions. I mean, that much is, should be obvious even to those casual observer. Um, and yet the governments have done it, shut us down. So in any case, I enjoyed this very much and I must leave. I, I'm on a tight schedule. Thank you, sir. Thank you, John. And listen, any Thank anytime you, you guys, anytime you guys would like to do this again, I'd be more than happy. Miss Janice, can you put these people on the we have a special list of people that if you would like at some future date to have me on again, I'd be more than happy to do so. Uh, so um, Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. Uh, and been, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate anybody with the balls to speak the rhymes, right? uh, no matter how unpopular that may be. Um, and I am one of the most unpopular people. <laughs> not with our, not with our community. You're a rock star. In our community. <laughs> right. We'd well, love to come shoot guns nice. with you one day. Yeah, we, yeah, that's another thing I like. But that, let's get through this crisis <laughs> first. This, let's get through the crisis before we, um, uh, you know, look at pleasurable things because we have some serious work to do, all of us. And thank you again for having me on. Thanks, sir. Have a great day, thank you, John. All right, bye bye. Take care. Well, that was a fun one. Um, uh, we knew it was going to be short, but hopefully we can have uh, uh, John back on again and do, uh, hey, it'd be great to set up an hour-long podcast with him. And I mean, I could talk to that guy all day. He's just, uh, he's an amazing character. So that was a lot of fun. Um, sorry, I wasn't able to get to anyone's questions in the chat. I just, we knew we had him for a short time today. So I wanted to just let him talk as much as possible. And um, of course, there was a lot of things I wanted to get into in terms of crypto and stuff, but I think that went really well, Bear. That was fun, huh? Uh, that's great. It's a perfect uh, blend of just leading with current events and then you guys getting into your subject matter, which you know more about than I do. And because that really is, uh, you know, a solution going forward, you know, I talk about medicine a lot, but if we don't have a sound uh, financial system and a private way to communicate and conduct business, then you know, that's going to uh, destroy more lives than any so-called disease. Exactly. Um, and one thing I wanted to bring up to him, and we're going to do this with uh, Jason Crow from uh, Cordal, uh with our, we want to do like a crypto for dummies type of show where we can um, really just cover a lot of the topics of crypto and blockchain. Um, and one of the things that I actually, I didn't even get to bring this up to him, but I spoke with John over the phone two years ago about a concept called uh, proof of experience because he had a similar idea, proof of exchange, I think he called it, but a whole new model for consensus where as he was bringing up the, the problem with Bitcoin and proof of work is that it takes a lot of electricity. And as we talk about a lot on the show, Bear, you know, the, the whole universe is run by electrical current. So to, to milk that, to mine that is, is, is practically the same as the current model of mining, you know, uh, precious minerals out of the ground. Why not take the energy of thought, the energy of creation and use that as the, um, as the driving factor behind uh, a new and engaging type of um, digital uh, exchange or digital currency. And so that was an idea that I developed with some brilliant minds a couple of years ago. And John caught wind of it through one of our people. And he actually called me and we talked about it for about 45 minutes as he was getting on a plane to get to some other island or something. But um, these are the types of innovations we need to get to that we're going to be moving towards. And, you know, I think, um, I think the time is ripe now. I think people are sitting at home, uh, losing their jobs. Come on in, join us in this, in this uh, new evolution of, of thought and uh, take back your own, you know, your own sovereignty and become an entrepreneur and, and learn how to code or learn how to write or learn how to, you know, do these other things to yourself and, and become your own boss and start working on these new innovations because that's, that's what's going to lead us down to the new world we want to see. And, and uh, of course, the way we're really controlled is through money. 
And, you know, Mike, you and I are connected through groups of people where there's, uh, you know, brilliant minds uh, with their hearts in the right places that are recreating technologies that were put out by people like Walter Russell and so forth, where we'd have all the energy we need. And, and what uh, John was talking about with his, uh, with his platform is that it would uh, take uh, so much energy that, you know, there's not enough electricity available. So <clears throat> that shouldn't be a problem either. And the only reason why it is an issue right now is because all the money is, is uh, being channeled into keeping the same slave system going. And if uh, some of these people that, you know, we communicate with daily had the, the resources and the funding, uh, we could solve all our problems and, and electricity and, and, and uh, you know, just uh, purposeful uh, endeavors and, and, and employ for the average person things that would give meaning to their life, uh, you, you know, it wouldn't even be an issue. Yeah, no, that's an amazing point you bring up. It's this idea of abundance versus scarcity. And uh, we've been driven into a scarcity mindset for hundreds of years now. And um, since the fall of Tartaria, if you want to go there. <laughs> but um, it's really fascinating that um, we can, it's literally all about just freeing your mind. It's, and you talked about this recently. You, were, uh, you had an appearance on Crow 777. Uh, sh radio show that went live this morning, guys, uh, check it out. Dr. Lando just did an interview and that's what you're talking about a lot is Walter Russell and the mind idea, the mind, uh, universe that we're in. So, um, it's really all about freeing your mind in the end. And when you can do that, the, it, every uh, opportunity, it just, uh, comes out of the ether. And what I was trying to do on that, uh, presentation was to, uh, you, you know, it's difficult subject matter because there's so much to it and it, it requires people fundamentally change their mind in every single way, but, but also present it in a way where, no, this is hard science for real and it has practical application. I've uh, uh, been successful in implementing it into medicine and the work that I do and it's uh, even more applicable to engineering and all the things that we're talking about here. So it's not just a metaphysical concept or, or just an academic discussion where we're talking about electric universe and quantum and all these kind of vague concepts. This is real science that can be applied now and it offers all the solutions. In fact, when you come at it from this vantage of real science, uh, it allows you to find the solution first uh, and then, and, and then from the solution, then you understand all the whys and how to work things out on the ground. Whereas we're in an awkward state, uh, humanity is right now because we're caught in the Maya of, um, you know, all these things that are put into motion, uh, by ourselves. And we don't even know how they got here or how to get out of the situation. And, uh, and we're of course trying to reverse engineer uh, you know, solutions from the same box that created the problems, which of course, Buckminster Fuller said uh, can't be done. So, you know, real science will tell you the solutions and allow us to uh, understand how to create an entire different reality, uh, you know, systems of science and medicine and engineering. So it's time and, and all we need is, um, well, we need two things. We need to shut off the TV, as you said, because as long as people are listening to coronavirus and all this bull crap that, I mean, think about it. We, we have everything that we need right in front of us now. And all we're paying attention to is this narrative that is being used to shut us down in every single way. And even though our economy is based on, a, a, you know, on quicksand and it's going to fail and it was designed to fail. Uh, in the meantime, instead of trying to find solution or even to survive it, to have a soft landing so that we can recreate on the other side, we're talking about coronavirus. And then you have people attacking each other because you're not wearing a mask. <laughs> I mean, you know, people that are engineering this whole de uh, debacle are laughing their asses off at us right now and can't believe how stupid we are. And meanwhile, we're fighting with each other arguing about something that doesn't even exist and um that's great yeah magic. I, it's I black magic ranting but <laughs> yeah yeah exactly 
I mean, they, there's a reason. Pull your why, heads out, folks. There's a reason why they call it TV programming. I mean, they're so obvious. It's right in your face. They call it TV programming for a reason. I mean, turn off the television. It's, it's funny. A lot of my friends who are saying social distancing works, wear your masks. I go to their play. I, when I visit them, they've still got cable television. And it's always on in the background and they'll sit and just become zombie, like eating their chips while they're watching their programming. Wake up, turn it off, get outside, go grow some food, get out of the cities for a little bit, get back to your humanity. It's so important. It's so important. And people get so angry when I, when I bring this stuff up to them because their conditioning is so strong and I'm sorry, but it's time to get, break free from that and wake the hell up as john was saying he's he's frustrated too it's like we're frustrated and we get to the point where it's like the buckminster fuller idea it's like we're just that's why we i moved up here i just want to like do my own thing i'm just was sick and tired of being in the matrix down in los angeles where you're completely surrounded by that thinking it's so childish and closed-minded and you know, science, the, the religion of science, scientism does such an amazing job of keeping people in that box because they have that authority they can just run to and they run to Google. And if you, ch- you know, you bring up the dangers of something like vaccines or something, they, have, they run to Google and look up Snopes and they go, ha ha, you're wrong, you're yeah. wrong. Guess what? Guess what's going on with Snopes? One of the founders is just being indicted or, or something going on with using Snopes money to, for prostitutes. So, yeah, I just saw that today. So it's like everything in the, in, in the, the current quote unquote mainstream is inversion. And it's, and you, if you dig it deep enough, you always find creepy stuff. You always find weird, creepy stuff. So that was interesting. I don't know if you heard about that with Snopes today, but I was just like, yes, finally. Yeah, and John was, uh, re- it was very refreshing talking to him because we are contemporaries and we can remember back to different times. And there was, uh, you know, that moment in time in the 60s where we didn't obey. In fact, we deliberately practiced disobedience. And today you have, you know, I see these videos with these people walking along on the bike path wearing their you know, their, their thing over their face and they're, you know, perfectly distanced. I mean, it's like a bad zombie movie. And, uh, you know, I mean, even Gandhi back in the day brought down the British empires ruled over, you know, an entire continent. I mean, how the hell did the British Isles, you know, a little tiny, uh, Island out in the uh, North Pacific there controlled the entire continent of, uh, of India. And that's exactly what's happening to the people of the, the world right now. We have a, a tiny group of people, uh, total sociopaths that have uh, forever been plotting this and now they're culminating their whole agenda. And, and, and here we are, billions of people just blindly obeying. And, and it's, it is frustrating. I mean, some of these people, you love them to death, but, uh, you know, I, when I do travel in the town, which is very rare, you know, you see these people with their mask on and, and getting up tight with each other. You just feel like slapping them at, you know, for their own good, just across the back of the head, say, wake the hell up. We can't obey. You just can't obey. We can't afford to. And these people that are telling us what to do, not only are, do they mean to do us harm, but they have no right to tell us what to do in the first place. And that goes back into our whole original system of jurisprudence based on, uh, you know, the original constitution. And, uh, you know, there have been several rewrites to the Constitution that most people aren't even aware of that gives them little loopholes, you know, to get their their nose under the tent, so to speak. And uh, little by little, they've usurped more and more. And now they're about to trash the entire document. And they're telling us right to their to our face. And even though a lot of, uh, you know, recent generations think that that is an archaic piece of paper, you have to understand that is a document based on natural law and the founding fathers that have been greatly demonized even these days they were deists they were very tapped into you know the the sort of principles that we talk about in circles with the theosophical society and and rudolf steiner you know they're they're great students they're very wise and they were not seduced into any dogmatic beliefs and they also uh you know frequented 
with the Native Americans when they got here who helped them devise this uh, document based on natural law. And so, you know, Native Americans even had a great deal of input with the founding fathers when that was written up. And we just, we have to see it for what it is. And these people are trying to trash it. And when that's gone, then it's, it, it will be a Mad Max and, uh, you know, it will be do as you're told. And it will be uh, like all these other failed experiments historically uh, under Hitler, under Stalin, who is uh, even worse than Hitler, uh, where just millions of people suffered and died gruesome deaths. And if you go into some of those places in the world, they still have not re recovered all of these decades later. That's what they're doing here. Of course, the United States of America is targeted because we at one time did enjoy more freedoms because of the Constitution. And um, so we are the biggest obstacle to that. That was why the European Union was formed in order to uh, create a, a larger faction in the West to work against the interests of uh, the national interest of the United States, which was not to create a political or patriotic boundary for North America. What it was is to uh, have an experiment in freedom that was originally intended to spread to the entire world and create a reality that you, John, and myself were talking about, you know, with our little discussion today. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the originally the idea of a constitutional republic is long gone, I would say. I mean, we're living under a corporatocracy since the late 1800s, right? I mean, that's something people need to realize. People say, well, I need to get a constitutional lawyer to help me out. Well, what's the point? You're, you're not even, you're, a, you're basically an asset for the government's corporation, the U U.S. Inc., and so you have, we have to totally change um, your definitions of who you are and, and reclaim your original sovereign sovereignty as a, as a human being. And a, a constitutional lawyer is a, kind of an oxymoron because in the original system, legal system is based on Article Three courts, Article Three of the Constitution. There are no Article Three courts. They don't exist. So you can get all the constitutional lawyers uh, in the world, and it doesn't matter. You don't have a venue uh, in order to um, argue a case based on the Constitution. And, of course, if you bring up the Constitution in the courts today, which are um, uh, operate according to the principles of the Uniform Commercial Code, has nothing to do with the Constitution, the magistrate will look at you and say, you know, I'm going to throw you in the in the in jail if you bring up the constitution one more time and in a technical sense they're right because it isn't a constitutional article three mandated court they don't exist and of course when you get a lawyer which you are doing is representing yourself with a um, um an esquire which is part of the british caste system an esquire is just right down the rung from a knight and it is uh, part of that caste system where we are still serfs and only in the Uniform Commercial Code, instead of being called serfs, we're called debtors. And, uh, you know, there are only two people, classes of people in this system. It's debtors and creditors. And they have established themselves as the creditors. And the majority of people, by their own signatures, have become debtors, which mean you have waived your rights. So that uh, we can go into that for another whole podcast someday. But you know, you're barking up the wrong tree if you think you're going to go in and argue the Constitution somewhere. The only thing we have left to do is to practice the Constitution and realize that we have been defrauded and that their so-called laws, which is based on legislation, which is nothing more than corporate bylaws, you, you know, uh, we have a company and we have our own internal bylaws. Now, if people say, okay, I want to be a subject of our company, then we say, okay, uh, we'll let you in, but you have to obey our uh, bylaws. And which means on every Tuesday, you have to wear blue or something, mm -hmm. uh, you know, then by contract, uh, you know, you are bound by that. Now, if we, for instance, had armies and and, you know, armed uh, police forces and everything 
and, and tax collectors to take your money. We could enforce that if you don't wear blue on Tuesday and throw you in jail, take everything you have and persecute you all we want. That's the ludicrous situation that we're in right now. And it's because we have incrementally given them our power. And if you understand real law, if you are defrauded, if it isn't a two-way contract and agreement with full disclosure, which none of us have gotten because we entered that contract at the three days after birth, 72 uh, hours after birth, we're issued a birth certificate, and that's where it starts. You're, you're sold into bondage at that moment. Now, I don't know about you, but at that point in my life, I didn't really know enough to make my own decisions, but I've been bound by that contract ever since. That is null and void on its face, and as soon as you realize that, then you not have not only have the lawful right, but you have the moral right to disobey. Yeah. Um, and so it comes down to education. It comes down to, you know, John was saying, well, what do we do? You know, I was asking, what do we do? And he's like, people just don't know. And I feel like in the end, it's, it's going to take a lot of breaking down all of this matrix um, narrative, uh, you know, all of this mind control. And, you know, I think it's going to be a, a two or three part scenario where we're going to have some sort of collapse involved because of the economics. Um, we're going to have things like decentralization, bring better uh, information out. And then finally, the communities coming together uh, in ways to, like we said, kind of just break away and do their own thing. And, you know, I'm hoping, I'm really hopeful that with what we're seeing with Alpha Vedic and with other friends, communities and stuff, we're seeing a, a mass awakening happening right now as people are at home, stuck at home, losing their jobs and having nothing better to do but jump on the internet and investigate this stuff. Um, you know, you did a recent interview with Jamie, I or excuse me, Gareth Ike, uh, David Ike's son, which is up on their network, Iconic, and we've been in conversations with them and they're, they're wonderful. And it, it's funny because David Ike, um, in 2000, 20 years ago, was instrumental in my waking up with the greatest, the biggest secret, which is an amazing book. And we're 20 years now of, you know, when I was reading that book, I, my mind was blown. And I was just like, wow, this is information I got to get to everybody. And I would tell all my friends. And I remember I'd have the book in my, uh, my house there in Santa Barbara. And I told my roommates and I just got labeled as the crazy conspiracy guy who believes in reptilians and all this stuff. And here we go, fast forward 20 years. And it's, you know, it's in a way gotten worse in some respects, but also on the flip side, this stuff's mainstream now. We, you see David Icke on London Real and, you know, 65,000 people joining the live stream. And um, so the polarity is more, I guess, dramatic than ever, but also the po on the positive side, we're seeing more, this becoming more and more mainstream, and it's just really interesting to see where it's all going to go. You and I first met through my son, uh, I, sitting uh, in uh, pubs on State Street on a Sunday afternoon and having discussions about things when you were first investigating these things, what, 20 years ago? <laughs> yeah seem kind of fantastical and everything uh, but here we are and and i think at that point neither one of us believed they'd ever get this far so here we are and you know the only thing i think i have left to say today about all and and the thing we all need to remind ourselves of is mother nature bats last and um don't ever forget that Touche. And that's a good way to end it because I want to get out to Mother Nature right now. It's another gorgeous day. Well, a lot of the country in the U.S. unfortunately is suffering from uh, cold and, and uh, a huge storm front coming in. Um, we've had an amazing weather all week here in uh, sunny uh, Northern California. Um, I want to get out and keep working on the food forest today. Um, but that's uh, something we stress every day is uh, if you can, get back to Mother Nature. Um, she always fixes things. Uh, for me, it's just an amazing therapeutic thing to do. Go out, plant. You know, I, I was saying on our t Telegram group, um, if you're starting to feel stressed or anxious from all this stuff, go plant a tree. There is nothing more calming and, and um, kind of beneficial to <laughs> your sanity than going out and planting a tree. It sounds silly, but 
um, it's a really amazing thing to do. So try that out. Um, if you like this talk today um, and you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, share this information. That really helps us out. Uh, if you're on uh, DLive here right now, we do this every Thursday at 10 in the morning Pacific Standard Time. You can join us on DLive.tv forward slash Alpha Vedic. Uh, we have, uh, you can join the chat, uh, throw questions to our guests or ourselves. Uh, you could join us on telegram t.me forward slash alpha Vedic. Um, that's a great way to join the community that's really active on there. And of course, go to alpha Vedic.com, uh, for all other information. Um, we have a new website that we're hoping to launch finally at the end of next week. We're really um, excited about it. We've been doing a ton of work on it. Uh, it'll include more information on our farm and everything we're doing. We have two new powerful, we have an update to our life force proteins line that's coming out and as well as an update to our C60 with a whole new line, including a, a citrus derived CBD C60 product and an ozon ozonated um, uh, C60 salve. Really, really powerful products uh, that we are putting out there to help people with their health. And uh, so if you want to support us, um, you can support us by buying products on our website, alphavedic.com, or also we have a Patreon. You can join us, patreon.com forward slash alphavedic, where actually our co-op exists right now. So you can join our co-op there or just uh, throw us five bucks a month to support us. The co-op's 15 bucks a month. And then we have an executive membership where we'll do an executive meeting once a month where you can jump on a Zoom and talk to Bear and I and all the other um, uh, people that are founders of this wonderful co-op that we started alpha vedic so you can join us at patreon that's my spiel for the day uh once again a massive thanks to our guest today john mcafee for coming on uh, we are honored to have him on and hope to have him on again in the future now that we've been added to the special list bear um but hey thanks for joining me too bear uh and go check out bear's interview on crow triple seven that launched today and uh support those guys because those guys rule and we're really happy to be um be on that show so Thanks again, guys, and have a blessed day. Get out there and grow something. Cheers.